Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you always. My dear sisters and brothers, during the season of Lent, the church dawns the colour of mourning purple, and we hear those words that are ingrained in the heart of every Catholic. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust you shalt return. Strong words, but words that are meant to bring out in us the fact that our earthly bodies are temporary, and that actually we are made for more than temporary. 
we are made for eternity. And so we come for the Eucharistic feast, a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. And we pray that Harry Bowen has been drawn into that banquet, his soul, that spirit that cannot die. And so we pause. We give thanks for Harry's life. And we now pray for the repose of his soul. We also pray at this time for Harry's family, who are heart sore. We ask that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, be with them. And now we prepare ourselves for that foretaste of the heavenly banquet through acknowledging our imperfections and sins and asking for God's healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you revealed eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your forgiveness, we come to the fullness of life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself in the form of bread and wine as food for the journey. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for Harry Bolin also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come, of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and and you and all living beings, so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy it all mortal beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated whilst we sing together the psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd. <laughs> Amen. 
And for the gospel acclamation. resurrection and the light says the Lord whoever believes in me will never die The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down wrapped it in a shroud and put him in a tomb which was hewn in stone in which no one had yet been laid. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering, discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes, but the two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. There's a, a fancy word for that reading. It's kerygma. It means the initial proclamation of the earliest Christians, their message. And their message was simple. That Jesus had died on the cross and rose to new life. That he'd broken the chains of death. And he'd done that to heal humanity, to salve humanity, that he was our salvation. And he showed throughout his life that he wanted to heal people, to bring them wholeness. He also showed that he didn't want people to suffer, and that he didn't want people to mourn, And how does that help us at a time like this when you are sore, when you are missing a loved one? Well, it helps because we know as Catholic Christians, as Christians, we know that Harry's soul, that Harry's loving spirit has now been drawn to God. The first book written in English by a woman was written by Julian of Norwich back in the 14th century. And it's basically the first book ever written on near-death experiences. She had a near-death experience. They thought she was dying, the priest was called, gave her the last rites. And after a few days she came back and she wrote down what she'd seen, a book called The Shoeings, The Showings. And she said when she got to heaven, she was sat down at this marvellous table and Jesus was going around serving everybody, making sure they were okay. She described them as the best host ever. That's what we believe will happen to those who have loved in this world. Those who have served their apprenticeship to love in their families, in their friendship circles, and then further afield. It might take some time for us to eventually get used to being in absolute love. We call that purgatory. It just takes a bit of time. Our prayers help and eventually Harry will be embraced into the great heavenly banquet by Jesus our Saviour. Please stand now for the prayers of the faithful. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all people living and dead. For Harry, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, (coughs) that he may now be admitted to the company of saints. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Harry, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pause for a moment now and we offer those intentions in our own heart. We offer them with Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary, full full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, You listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Harry. Cleanse him and all the departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of life with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated whilst the altar is set and the gifts of bread and wine brought forward.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Harry may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your people, Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Martin, our Bishop-elect, the clergy, and all the faithful. Remember your servant, Harry Bowen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in death, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and they praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand as we pray together in the words that Jesus left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hopes and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On this day, we told it peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On this day, we told it peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On this day, we told his peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. We sit or kneel. This is Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him 
who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. now time for Holy Communion, so if you're not a Catholic, you're still welcome to come forward for a blessing. Please indicate that by crossing your arms over your chest. Thank you.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that Harry, for whom we have celebrated these sacred mysteries, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I can ask you to be seated whilst Daniel reads the eulogy on behalf of the family. My granddad Harry was born on 21st of March 1948 at the home of his paternal grandparents in Lyft Road and he was baptised here in St Mary's. The family home was 74 Arkley Street and granddad attended St Mary's Four Bank School but moved to St Vincent's when his parents were given the keys to a brand new house at 1 Midmill Road. He attended St Michael's Secondary School until he was 15. He had to wait until he was 16 before he could start an apprenticeship. In between, he had a few jobs. He did paper and bread deliveries and also worked for a butcher in Lockheed delivering meat on a bike. That job ended when he was caught speeding down Lockheed Road with his pal sitting on the front of the bike in the butcher's basket. At 16, he started his apprenticeship as a shipwright in the Calden shipyard. When asked why he chose to be a shipwright, he said there were queues for all the different trades and the shipwright one was the shortest. Grandad worked at a few places. After the boatyard closed, shipwrights were no more and Grandad became a plater. He worked at Kestrel Marine, Davy Offshore, McGregor Engineering and worked in Russife, Methil, Burnt Island, Belfast and he also had a stint on oil rigs. Latterly, he worked for JTC, or Wood Group, as it became known. When he was 19, he met my gran. She was 15 and a pupil at Lawside Academy. They were married at St Andrew's Cathedral on the 20th of June 1970, when Grandad was 22 and Gran was 18 and a half. They would have been celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary in June of this year. A year after they married, my uncle Paul was born, and that same year they emigrated to South Africa to join the rest of my grand's family. They returned home in 1975, and in 1977 my mum was born and their family was complete. My granddad grew up supporting Celtic, but as some, as you, as some of you will know, if you marry into the Mulholland family, there's only one team you're allowed to support, and so granddad became a Dungeon United fan. He would take Uncle Paul to the games at Tannadice and also took my mum. Although I am told that during Dundee United's 1983 league when it ends, my mother fell asleep at my granddad's feet. Grandad never really lost his love for Celtic though, and on a trip to Dublin with my dad, he had a small shamrock tattooed on the front of his wrist. My dad assures us that him and Grandad were sober at the time. Grandad doesn't like tattoos, so when Grandad came home from Dublin, he covered the tattoo up for three weeks until my gran spotted it. I think it was another three weeks before she spoke to him again. Grandad loved his holidays, and we always holidayed as a family. We have been to many places, such as South Africa, Dubai, Mexico, Marbella, Greece, Portugal, Canary Islands, Ibiza, Mallorca and Turkey. But if we asked Grandad what his favourite holiday was, he would say Benidorm. He loved Benidorm because we used to hire a scooter for him, and my brother and I, Dylan, would chauffeur him around everywhere we went. 
The English football team he supported was Liverpool, and we enjoyed a few trips down there, often taking a game at Anfield. My granddad was a very good football player. While at St Vincent's, he played for the school team, and he was also chosen to play for Dundee Catholic School Boys. He played outfield at first, but then had a goal a go and goal when, and that's where he remained. He was a very good goalkeeper. He was playing for St Vincent's ju- Juveniles when Lockie Harp approached him to sign for them. During his time with the Harp, he reached the semi-final of the Scottish Junior Cup, mainly thanks to Grandis heroics in the goal. After the quarter-final game against Kirk and Tillich, Rob Roy, which ended 2-2, the headlines in, the, in the, that night's Sporting Post read, Bowling saves Harp in Cup. An excerpt from the, from the article said, Harp had keeper Bowling to thank for earning them a replay against the former Cup winners. Time and time again, the cat-like Bowling defied them with brilliant saves. My grand still has that newspaper cutting. Grand had also played for the North End before moving to, to South Africa. Whilst in South Africa, my grand had played for Johannes, Johannesburg Municipals and the LTA, which were run by my uncle Ben. While playing for the LTA, my granddad was awarded his colours for Transvaal. This was a great achievement because Transvaal was a huge provenance of South Africa with a large population. My granddad wasn't really scared of anything, but he didn't like heights much, and he hated lightning. During a game in South Africa, a bad storm developed with thunder and lightning. The game continued until my Uncle Ben shouted, Where's my goalkeeper? The goal was empty and my granddad could be seen making a quick escape to the changing rooms. When granddad worked for Kestrel, he joined the committee of the social club as social convenor. He was in charge of booking the entertainment for the club and would also call the bingo. He booked the best bands and the Kestrel club became one of the best places to go at the weekends. While at Wood Group, he also helped organise the staff outings. Grandad also liked to be bet on the horses, and every Saturday he would do a lucky 15, betting £3 on four horses. He would tell us that he won, and when we asked how much, he would say 80 pence, but that will go towards my next bet. He also enjoyed a game of dominoes on a Monday in the townhouse. Above all, though, my grandma's greatest love was his family, and he was at his happiest spending time with us all. He would do anything for us, and we loved him for that. Personally, my granddad was also my best friend. I have so many cherished memories from a young age, and I'm so lucky and happy to have grown to an age where we could spend quality time together, normally talking and watching the football, and latterly with a beer or two. He was all, always trying to make us laugh, and he always did. He taught us, he loved us, and was always there to look after us. I will take so much from him into my life, and one day hope to tell my children about the fabulous life he gave us. He was the only granddad I had, but he more than made up for that, and I wouldn't have changed that for the world. Thank you, Daniel. On behalf of Aileen and the family, I would like to thank you for your prayerful presence here today. I know it means a lot to them. And I would also ask you to go to the Fair Muir Club for some refreshments afterwards so that you can share your memories of Harry. If you would please stand now for the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Harry, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall meet Harry again and enjoy his friendship. 
although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. The response to each of the short verses. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul, receive his soul, and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul, Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Harry in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, we will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, come towards us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to Harry and help us to remain to comfort one another in assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ <coughs> our Lord. Amen. In song, let us take Harry to his place of rest. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks very much.